Hello, I hope you're enjoying Gustafson Family Movies. I decided to put this video at the end to just give a few notes about the project and explain a few things about it. Uh, I guess the first thing is the reason for the project, and that is to preserve history. The films on which all these events were recorded have already been deteriorating for decades, and so by getting them converted to digital media now, we can hopefully help preserve them for generations to come. One of the biggest uh, problems I saw um, when, uh, when trying to think about doing this was the distribution part of it. Everybody knows the Gustafsons are a big family, and if I were trying to make DVDs for everyone, I'd be working, working, I'd probably never get it done. So by uploading them to YouTube, not only do we have them stored safely in a server somewhere far, far away, but also we give access to any Gustafson around the world to view them, and around the world often we are. Um, the real impetus then for, for getting the project done though uh, was my mother's birthday which is coming up on March 31st. Uh, so I'm hoping to surprise her with this and hopefully it's a, it's a gift she really enjoys. Um, a few, one of the biggest notes I wanted to share is about the order. You'll notice when you're watching these that the, the real numbers don't necessarily go in chronological order. Um, now, my grandpa was a very kind of open-minded, a very creative thinker, I would say, um, in contrast to me, who's, I'm a very kind of straight-line thinker, so to speak. So, as, uh, as Grandpa Gustafson was doing this, he, he first kind of made reels uh, that are family reels, which are the basic family events, birthdays, Christmases, and things like that. He goes all the way through those from, uh, from 1953 to 1977, and then the reels keep going, but they're different things, um, like vacations and reunions, things like that. So once we get to the end in 1977, then we actually jump back to 1953 and we're on vacation in Canada. So that's something that could be a little confusing. Hopefully that, uh, that can help straighten it out for you. Um, the equipment used to do this, boy, it's, uh, it's a tough thing trying to do this, uh, do this on a dime. Uh, but I'll show you a little bit about my setup here. Just grab this off. Um, this is my projector. It's a, it's a Bell & Howell. I think it's uh, maybe an 80s projector, something like that. Uh, you can see the distance that I'm sending it really isn't too big. So if we, if we turn it on here, uh, the actual image that's projected is, is fairly small. Uh, the reason I did this is to try to combat, I guess what I would call the strobing effect. If I were to project this onto a white background, I noticed that I got much more of this, this wavy strobing type uh, activity, which I'm sure you'll notice if you, if you watch a few movies here. Um, by using a gray background, we kind of negated a little bit of that and helped sort of normalize, uh, normalize what is happening here. Uh, these, these films are, are very high contrast, and, and converting it to digital is a, is a real beast of a task. Uh, I really tried hard to get the, the best quality I could, and I'd say, um, I'd say at the end of the day I probably got maybe 90% of the quality that could be done by a professional, uh, but it did it for uh, $0. So uh, I hope Oliver would be happy uh, with the way I did this, kind of on a shoestring, using what we have, you know, making do and, and, uh, and doing something creative rather than something expensive. So I think he'd be happy with that. Some of the, uh, the issues you run into though, um, obviously focus can be a problem, um, film breakage, I mean I have lots of these uh, kind of accordion looking things that, that all got jammed up in here, so really it can be kind of an arduous process to get these converted, but, uh, but hopefully in the end it's, uh, it's something worth, worth doing. Uh, just, just a couple more notes I'll, I'll give to you. Uh, if you're wanting to uh, to put these on a bigger screen, say, uh, say put them, connect them to a HDTV or something like that, that would be possible using a laptop. You'd have a couple different options for that. First of all would be a VGA cable, which looks like this. It's trapezoidal and, uh, and 15 pins. The output on your computer, uh, it's, a, it's a blue trapezoid, you'll see. The thing about VGA is it gives good quality, but you'll have no sound. So if you like the ambiance of the clickety-clack as you're watching these, which, which I kind of do, you'll have to uh, use a different solution. Uh, one of those solutions would be the HDMI cable, which we should all know what that looks like by now. Looks like this. 
most laptops I'd say in the last two or three years for sure would have an HDMI out. Uh, you'll just have to check yours. It should be should be labeled or you should be able to see something that, that looks like this. Uh, also the videos were recorded in 4.3 format so um, about like this as I'm watching myself on the camera here. Uh, so you will have some bars along the side as you're watching these on, the, on your TV because they're not recorded in wi widescreen obviously. Um, another thing to mention is that I try in the descriptions of these videos to, to give a little rundown about what's happening in each one of them. They're not a full play-by-play -play necessarily. Uh, being that I did this in a covert nature and I didn't call up my mom and say, hey, where'd you go on vacation 1958? Where is this place or who is this person? Uh, sometimes I'm just, I'm not sure, so sometimes I'll leave those off there. You can help me out by uh, down below dropping a comment into the videos and telling me a little bit more about what's going on. Uh, shoot me an email, give me a call, and I'll, I'll add those to the description so we can, uh, so we can uh, help let everybody know what's going on. Um, the reels used for this, I guess there's, there's really two types. Uh, first is a 14 or 15 minute reel, which is about this size. I believe the the reels one through one through nine or ten are all these 14 minute types. But then, uh, but then we move to a smaller a smaller version, uh, which is a, a four minute reel, which which looks like this. Um, Oliver sometimes gives me uh, descriptions written on there. Uh, sometimes not. It's usually it's usually pretty basic. Um, you can see this is what a little four minute reel looks like. Uh, so most of the things I've had to kind of watch myself and, and fig try to figure out at least what's uh, what's going on. So so you will see after about reel ten, like I said, the videos get a lot shorter. Um, uh, he he tended to record a lot more early on and uh, and a little bit less uh, as as the family aged, I guess, which is uh, every youngest's complaint, I, I suppose. Uh, Oliver was pretty judicious in his use of of the camera. It's it's basic, basically big life events, vacations, birthdays, Christmases that make up the bulk of these recordings. Uh, my grandpa Anderson on the other side. Um, that I just have dozens and dozens of reels of, of everything and those start back in 1938. That's another project I hope to get to but, uh, but not quite yet at least. So um, I think that's pretty much all I have to say. Um, again, I, I really enjoyed uh, doing this project and hope you as the viewer will enjoy watching these. Uh, if you have any questions for me, please just, just give me a call and uh, yeah, enjoy.